So today it's time for a new video. We will make uh, the layout for the gun stock, uh, especially the drawing of the layout, I would say. And yeah, let's go. At first, before we start, we need one really necessary measurement. That's the length of pull. That means you take your arm, elbow 90 degrees, put the measuring tape in the elbow, bend your fi uh, trigger finger and then you will see exactly we have 34 centimeter. That's the length of pull. So we need to fit the drawing to this length of pull. So we start with drawing. We need as well the lock. I will use this time a uh, LNR Duos Egg lock because I like it very much. It's really fast. And a Davis Jaeger trigger, double set trigger. So this we will need for making the drawing as well. So let's start. We start with marking an upper line and then take a look the thickness of the barrel. It will be a little bit less than an inch, 24 millimeters. Our lines are a little bit too long, but that don't bother us. So the end of the stock shall be here. From here we marking 34 millimeters for the length of pull, uh, for 34 centimeters. Here will be our trigger. So the lock should be here and the length of pull so the position of the lock be here so this plate give us the end position of the barrel then we have roughly 2.5 centimeter for the thread so We are marking the center line of the barrel. And the Position of the priming pan should be slightly below this center line. So
that's pretty good and we need to mark the position of the trigger then we go down from here about eight millimeters we need some gap for the, for the ramrod the ramrod will be nine to ten millimeters And five millimeters of stock below it. That's the line for our gun stock. Now the trigger shall be with this position exactly in this shear, in this angle. So You can take it uh, whether with the uh, set trigger or maybe with this one. So we need to put it in this angle. Uh, I made a mistake, but don't matter, we make the main drawing a little bit longer, 4.5, yeah, then we are here. This paper is relatively small. So then we think about our drop. Marking out Yeah, that should be good. So then we marking out uh, how many drop we would need. On the Jaeger rifle the drop mostly is not so much. We're taking about uh, two two inches, a little bit less than two inches of drop. Then from there we are marking the thickness of our stock. somewhere about 12.5 centimeters and now we can go Our 
adjustment lines. the stock here in this area getting thinner so the curve here on the bottom starts later or getting more far backwards so that it narrows in the um, in the area of the grip and possible in the same angle here like the lock plate of the grip we have here about four centimeters maybe 4.5 uh, four centimeters is okay good
So here is the layout for our gun stock. The only thing we still need to do is So we have a drop of four centimeter. We have a length of pull thirty four point five. Yeah. length of pull is 34.5 and So, <clears throat> we have marked out all measurements, all rough measurements we will need for a nice Jaeger rifle. The difference between uh, Jaeger stock and uh, um, long, ri long rifle stock is that you have less, uh, way less drop in the rear than on a um, than on a long rifle. A long rifle at least will have a stronger angle and much more drop so uh, and the uh, the rest of the appearance is more or less the same depending on the style this style is more close to uh, this very straight design of a Lancaster rifle but at least with less drop maybe half the drop here on the end of the stock than on a Lancaster rifle. This ri the Jaeger rifle is uh, more universal. Um, the long rifle is more uncomfortable when you shoot them lying on the ground or uh, in kneeling position uh, both is rather well but in lying position a long rifle is rather uncomfortable in cause of the bigger drop of the stock so this one is I would say yeah a multi-purpose rifle uh, now or now I give uh, so once more now I can explain all measurement features we first took the 
white of the barrel, mark it out, then we take the rear plate of the priming pan, put it at the rear of the barrel and then we have the position for the lock against the barrel then we can draw out the outer lines of the lock if it's easier to you you can disassemble the lock but then remember that you mark out the trigger lever so we marked out our lock then we have to mark out the position of the ramrod that's slightly about five to eight millimeters below the barrel and then plus minimum five millimeters for the thickness of the stock below the ramrod the next is that we mark out the position for the trigger for this we take the trigger and here in this angle we need to place the trigger in the po position of the trigger lever of the lock so we have this position as well then we can mark out the drop here at the end for a long rifle you need slightly more drop but uh, you can take also the measurement from your i would say uh, from your uh, from your uh, from your eye down to the shoulder that's roughly about four fingers wide then you have the normal drop of a long rifle somewhere about and uh, for a Jäger rifle it should be slightly less so that the cheek piece is more or less horizontal a little bit yeah a little bit angled downwards then the width or length of the butt plate that's roughly about 30.5 centimeter 13.5 centimeters somewhere like that um, yeah and then we can draw this line and don't forget the curve on the bottom is more shallow than the curve on the top we don't want that the uh, handle of the stock the hand area is as wide as the stock in the front it should be smaller so the drop here at the end is more than here on the bottom and it shall get smaller and then we can uh, yeah we can draw this line like I did it first this line with a drop of the lock this line yeah by hand as well with a drop of the lock and at the end that should be for the for the overall design it looks best when this measurements are equal so from here to here and from here to here this measurement should be equal and then it makes a really i would say um, yeah a fine look at the end so then the length of the cheek piece is more or less by feeling uh, you should have a comfortable handle so a little bit more backwards looking strange a little bit more forward looking strange as well so this is pretty okay and then the main drawing of the stock 
is is done and now we take care of the cheek rest and the trigger guard so first we make the trigger guard we need enough space for the finger we make a slightly curve here a little bit space at the bottom not much and then we go relatively straight backwards and then going upwards with a slightly curve the trigger guard of a Jäger rifle mostly is much more easy or much more simple in the in the curves like for a long rifle for a long rifle we have first the trigger guard as a u shape and then the hand rest as a u shape in the opposite direction as well and here in the rear We will have the position of the connection between the main body of the trigger guard and the gun stock. This can be more shallow as well. So we have the overall design of the trigger guard as well. The fine design I mostly do later. And here We later add some material for stabilizing this angle. And now we can do some, or uh, here we have the trigger marked out. And now we have to think about if we do some molding or not. If we do some molding, then the molding will start here at the point where the trigger guard will touch the gun stock. So The next is the cheek piece. That depends on if you go downwards very much or not. The best is to draw a slightly curve from this point downwards. Like this. And from here 
a curve as well with the length here from this point and that should be the end of your cheek piece you see here from the angle of the uh, butt plate here is the top part of our butt plate and from there we go down we take the pencil go forward and here is the end of our cheek piece then we draw out this line The same we can do here as well. that's possible as well like this and to make it look nice the difference be or between the point here this angle here and the angle here to the bottom shall be bigger here at the end so that it makes an overall yeah nice look as well the flat top of the cheek piece here at the beginning we have about 10 millimeters and at the end we make slightly more like 12 or 13 because when you make this really square, then it don't fit to the angle of the gun stock as well and look a little bit strange. So if you have, uh, would be better to have a little bit more. It looks good if it's getting a little bit smaller to the end and in this area we now create enough space for carving whatever. So. So what we did, so once more, what we did for laying out, uh, for a layout for the trigger guard, at first we need some space for the finger, then make half a circle and then leave some space at the bottom of uh, the uh, first trigger going backwards with a shallow, very shallow curve that's more or less like an S and leave some gap here in the, uh, in the rear and this gap it's by taste but it's about 
1.2 centimeter something like that and then here we make a circle as well for the fixation to the gun stock and going backwards and at least it should fit the length of three fingers plus the trigger finger that's very comfortable and very close to the originals then the next was we draw out the molding and the bottom of the uh, of the gun stock the molding should start that looks yeah to my opinion that's the place where it should it should start at the end here where the trigger guard touches the stock then we draw out because we need this line um, or we need it before we marking the cheek rest otherwise uh, this distance will be too small then we leave some space here maybe double the molding size and then start out with the bottom line just with a helping line very shallow and then we marked out the end point here of the cheek rest. For this, we only take the corner of the uh, of the butt plate with the pencil going down, and we are roughly at the point. The other side shall have a shallow curve here from this corner downwards and then we have this point so that it looks that this rounded area will merge into the gun stock so and then the width of the flattened area in the front of the cheek rest here we have about yeah eight millimeters something like that and here 13 the reason is that the front or the reason why the front is smaller than the rear uh, that a square part on the angled part every time looking yeah like uh, some some stranger to the design so we need an ang uh, um, uh, tapper here in this area of the cheek rest as well so it don't look too strange to the tapper of the uh, of the gun stock itself so that's all for the design of of the gun stock and to my opinion it fits pretty well and here we can see when we do the drawing like this we have a perfect positioning here for the tongue screw so everything merged together very nice and at least the complete design overall will be perfect. What we can do as well to make this one even, yeah, I would say with some extra design feature that we will create a step here in this area. For this we need to pull up the rear here of the of the trigger about two or three millimeters and then this will create a step like yeah on American rifles 
this is known as a very early feature of rifles. And that will merge the... Uh, yeah, will look even more like the round area will be, yeah, merged into the, I would say, flat surfaces of the gun stock. So, we made the design for our gun stock. So, once more from the front, maybe here you can see it way better, the shallow curve and the bottom, and the curve that's narrow, narrowing down to the bottom curve to create a smaller I would say distance here and the lesser drop of the gun stock and as well the tapering of the cheek piece the angle here And here. So that's all for now.